Ken Mayhew é um executivo sénior de angariação de fundos que tem uma paixão pela beneficência, procurando doadores que partilhem o compromisso do William Osler Health System de prestar cuidados de saúde. Sob a sua liderança, a Osler Foundation tem registrado um crescimento contínuo das receitas, com resultados que trazem grandes benefícios para a comunidade. First of all, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you for having me here today. So, let's start by talking about your connection to fundraising. Sure. What brought about the interest in this area? I think it was personal. I think it started with my family when I was growing up. Mine was always one of those families that was involved with the community, maybe helping a neighbor or a worthy cause or their school. And then when I was a teenager, my mother suddenly got quite sick and she needed a community hospital. And I'm the eldest of a large family. We have a big family. And you know, one day your mom is there and the next day she's very ill. And I realized that in your life sometimes you're going to need someone to help. And community hospitals are one of those groups that help so many people. We never need it till we need it. But in the story of our life, everyone needs a hospital sooner or later. And in order to do what they need to do, those hospitals need funds. And I kind of thought, I wanted to do something that would give back, would have impact, that would, you know, mobilize and engage a lot of people. And it just seemed like a really natural thing for me to do, to have this as what I would eventually decide to do with my whole career. What does the challenge of raising funds for various health-related causes represents for you personally and professionally? Right. It's, it's a great question. Thank you for asking. I think personally it means that at a time when an individual or a family is very vulnerable, when they're concerned about something that's happened. You know, you're going along a certain way and then suddenly something happens from a health perspective. It sort of throws your whole life around a little bit. And in those times, they really count on the nurses, the physicians, the caregivers to help make them better. And how that relates to me professionally is I'm able to work with community members and leaders like you to inspire people to make contributions to the hospital. Sometimes those are very small, sometimes they're larger, but in, in, in a collective they make a huge difference because they help provide the equipment and the space that our team here at Osler needs to do what they need to do. So it's very personal to me. In your opinion, is still a challenge to get people to donate or is there a significant degree of solidarity in Canada? I think the answer is that people in Canada are very generous. They're amongst the most generous people in the whole world. There are studies done on this work. And I think people give for different reasons and different amounts. So for someone, I think giving is helping their neighbor, maybe shoveling the snow, checking on them during COVID, just making sure the person next door was doing okay, especially if they're on their own. For other people, it has to do with a financial contribution. And what I think is amazing about Canadians is so many of the things that make our country great, that makes, you know, sort of Canada the caring community that it is, are those charities and nonprofits. There are about 170,000 different ones in Canada that are here for us. Maybe it's a food bank or a shelter or a big brothers, big sisters, a, a community club. Uh, that on a day when you need a little extra help, that organization is able to be there for you. And all of those organizations need funds. And I would say there's probably more organizations than there are people to give. So it becomes a little bit competitive. So people have to make choices, you know? Choices that are important to them and in the story of their lives. And I think it's just amazing that I have the privilege of working with the community to support a cause that all of us sooner or later are going to need. Um, so I think that Canadians are caring, I think they are giving, I think it's a bit of a tougher time for some people now and I honour and acknowledge that. You have to sort of take care of yourself first. But what might be surprising is sometimes it's the people who have the least who give the most because they know what it's like to be without and they're incredibly generous. So I'm, I'm very inspired by that. What are the current Osler Foundation causes you are engaged in? Right. I think, building on my previous comments, probably the biggest one for us is to take Peel Memorial 
Integrated Health and Wellness Center. Pia Memorial's been around for us here in Brampton for 100 years and make it Brampton's second full service hospital. So we need another 24 seven emergency department here in Brampton. We need more space to enable the care that is needed by our community that, that literally is gonna take more beds, more space and more equipment. And so that's a big project for us. That is something that will, uh, I think, transform healthcare in Brampton. As we do that, there's always equipment needs, there's always programming needs. Unfortunately, our communities have a very high mental health challenge right now. So we help, for example, provide funds to those who are delivering those services to our youth. That's a new program we just started last year. So I would say probably the biggest one for us is the realization of Peel Memorial as Brampton's second hospital. But in addition to that, people come all the time. Maybe for one person they want to thank a nurse, for someone else they want to buy a wheelchair for the hospital. All those things are needed and all those things matter. Your fundraising career is one of the chapters of the book, How Canada Works, The People Who Make Our Nation Thrive, by Peter Mansbridge. Right. How did that happen? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's something that I think Peter Mansbridge, as you know, is a renowned journalist. He led the national uh, news broadcast for 20 years, but he doesn't have a journalist background. He comes from a background where he was actually making announcements to board planes at a small airport one day, and someone heard him make that announcement, heard his voice, and said, you should consider a career in journalism. And he sort of thought, isn't it interesting how sometimes people stumble into these careers? Sure. Or how did someone find, how did they end up doing that? You know, how do you, he tells the story of someone who, uh, who is an undertaker or, you know, or someone else who is uh, an air traffic controller and tries to tell the story of people who are sort of going along in life and then something calls them, something really impacts them. And, and, and that's what sort of creates the path of their life from their career perspective. For me, it's a deep honor. Uh, fundraising is such a huge sector. It's as big as the industrial sector. It's as big as the automotive sector in Canada. It's huge. And to be chosen as the person who the chapter is about fundraising, uh, I think I'm the only person from Brampton or even Peel who is profiled in the book. And that's a great honor, but it's actually much more about Osler in our community and this thing that we've built together of the community supporting the hospitals and that's my favorite part of the chapter in the book. So this comes to another question. Do you believe that this may benefit popular support for the Osler Foundation? I hope so. You know, I hope it actually benefits giving to all causes. Like one of the stories I tell is that my daughter's care about the environment. That's very important to them. They're worried about the environment. And people give to different causes and I always think that every cause is important and it really matters. And for many people they give to their place of faith, right? That's very important to them. But I, I think I sort of the idea of a, the saying is a rising tide raises all ships so that when people start to do things that are good, other people see that and they're inspired by that. And if you have affinity or interest in the hospitals, then I think this will definitely impact you and appeal to you. And I've heard lots of lovely stories from people saying, hey, you're in the book, good for you. But I think for me, it's almost even bigger than that, which is I just want people to step forward and support something that matters to them in a way that matters to them. For me, my work is supporting Osler and our hospitals. For someone, it might be a boys club, a girls club. Um, but I really hope that we'll all just do a little bit more. Reach out, help our neighbor, create a sense of community, and do great things like build the Peel Memorial Hospital, which is only possible when the community comes together. Comes together, we do great things. So let's close with a message to the Portuguese Canadian community, sure. you know, which is well known for involvement in charitable causes. I would just say abrigado, like the <laughs> Amigos dos Portugueses Pio Memorial. We raised more funds from the Portuguese community for the Pio Memorial Hospital than any other Portuguese community has done for any hospital in Canada. And that's in Brampton. And that has, that says a lot. You know, there are like 140 hospitals just in Ontario and some big, big ones in downtown Toronto. But here the Portuguese community has stepped forward above all. 
and I'm very grateful for that. And for everyone who contributed and supported us, it, it could be $25, it could be something more. You made a difference. You built a hospital that unfortunately when the pandemic hit was able to care for Ramptonians. And I would just say all my Portuguese friends, thank you for being there for us so we could be there for you. Exactly. Thank you so much, Ken, You're welcome, for coming here and say those beautiful words. Oh, I'm very Thank grateful. You. Thank you.